And so we believe that there's a real opportunity to provide consumers with a healthier and safer alternative to alcohol in the form of, of cannabis-infused adult format beverages. All right, go Raptors. Um, so we, you know, I think what we should really look at, because a lot of companies are looking at beverages as an alternative delivery system for cannabis, we actually view it as an alternative to alcohol. So we believe that there's a disruptive opportunity for cannabis beverages as an alternative to alcohol. Alcohol has been in the same basic format, the same basic structure, wine, beer, and spirits for thousands of years uh, without any real disruption. And so we believe that there's a real opportunity to provide consumers with a healthier and safer alternative to alcohol in the form of, of cannabis-infused adult format beverages. So when you look at what are the drivers of cannabis consumption, uh, right now it's really recreation. About 80% of consumers uh, that, that consume cannabis that had a, a medicinal license are actually using it for recreational purposes. Uh, so when you look at the moods, the times, the places where people would consume cannabis, those very closely mirror the same occasions when people would consume alcohol. Um, beverages are the most socially acceptable format for uh, any intoxicant use. If you look at the two most popular intoxicants on the planet are beer and wine. And beer is the vast majority of the industry. Wine is number two. In terms of revenues, you're looking at uh, beer is about 42% of the alcohol market. Wine's about 31, 32% globally. So at, from a, a social acceptability standpoint, you know, there's no acceptability for smoking or vaping. It's still something that has to happen in the back alley. Whereas when you look at beverages, we can do that around the dinner table, right? We share it with friends. We do it at our work functions. So those occasions where you can consume a beverage are far more acceptable and far more enjoyable and luxurious without any of the, the issues or the negative bias that comes with any other form of, of consumption. And, and gummies and those kinds of things are not really social. You know, once you have a gummy, then what are you gonna do, right? There's no luxuriating over, you know, a complex flavored gummy, right? Um, so we don't, you know, and I, so I think that that occasion really lends itself to the beverage format because it's something we can do and share and enjoy uh, with a meal, with friends in a social environment. When you look at the beverage alcohol market, it shows tremendous potential for cannabis beverages. The size of the alcohol beverage marketplace is dramatically larger. Than, than cannabis. Yet cannabis actually has the opportunity. In Canada, it's measured uh, almost comparably to the size of the wine industry. You know, the, the black market industry in Canada was measured around $6 billion. When you start to legalize and add other formats, there's an expectation it would grow to about $7, seven to $8 million, billion. The wine industry in Canada is about $9 billion. So comparably speaking, you're looking at something that's almost around that size. And when you look at the number of consumers who would actually enjoy a beverage, it's actually right now about double the number of cannabis consumers. So when you put cannabis into a beverage format, you actually acquire a whole new category of consumers that are not consuming cannabis now. They have no interest in smoking or vaping, and they have no interest in taking a gummy. But when you put it in a beverage, you start to attract a whole new category of consumer that are used to making that drinking their intoxicant, they're used to sharing that with their friends, and that would enjoy, would try, and as long as the beverage is delightful and delivers a good experience for them, are gonna make that transition. So there's that habitual expectation that when I drink this thing, I get a little bit intoxicated, I can enjoy that, I'll do that with my friends. If all of them are doing it, then I'll join in. The reason why we believe that cannabis is a healthier alternative to alcohol is really you know, fundamental. Alcohol is a toxin. It's actually a poison that in small doses gets us intoxicated. But it's actually the cause right now, according to the World Health Organization, of about 5% of all deaths annually in the world are attributed directly to alcohol consumption. Now that's not alcohol abuse. 
That's alcohol consumption. Even in latest reports coming out, even one glass a day of wine can lead to about 20 forms of cancer. So when you look at the cancer, you look at liver disease, you look at kidney disease, you look at Alzheimer's, you look at arthritis, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, et cetera, et cetera, all of those are disease states that are either caused by alcohol or contributed to by alcohol or worsened by alcohol. Yet what's really interesting is when you look at cannabis, cannabis is currently being researched as a therapy or treatment by almost all of the research foundations that are looking for cures and treatments for those exact diseases. Right? In Canada, the Arthritis Society has actually dedicated $25 million to research cannabis as a treatment for arthritis. Yet, when you put it into a beverage, it actually gives you no hangover, it has a lot fewer calories, um, there's no toxicity, and especially in the Canadian regulations where we're, we have a maximum of 10 milligrams per unit. So if you have a single beer, you can have 10 milligrams. If you have a six pack of beer, the six pack can have 10 milligrams. Right? If you have a single demi bottle of, of wine, that can have 10 milligrams, but if you have a 750 ml bottle of wine, maximum 10 milligrams, right? So when you look at the overconsumption reports in the Canadian formats and with the Canadian dosage levels that are allowed by law, you're absolutely never going to have issues of overconsumption. So you're gonna be delivering to consumers something that's safe to drink, something that's enjoyable to drink, something that ideally mirrors the onset and duration of alcohol and mirrors the intoxication level of alcohol in terms of the level of intoxicant you get when you, when you uh, consume it. Now, with, when you take the alcohol out of beer and wine and other formats, you actually take out a lot of the empty calories. So you're dealing, again, with no toxicity, 60 to 80% fewer calories and no hangover. So a lot of the main issues that people have with alcohol cannabis really actually solves.